Welcome to csstudents.com, a learning portal for company secretary students. The Companies Act 2013 brought many changes in the key provisions of the company law. One of them is the appointment of statutory auditors. As we all know, statutory auditors are a vital element of any corporate structure. Let's first talk about the broad role of the auditors. Corporate structure is a mix of various parties. At the center, we have the company, then shareholders and creditors, who fund the company for doing business, then board of directors who have the primary authority to run the business. The board is supposed to work in a fiduciary capacity, in the interest of the company. And then, the executive management of the company. Executive management includes the managing directors, chief executive officer etc. They generally work under the supervision of the board. So, company is a legal entity, wherein shareholders and creditors are putting money for business. Directors and executives are putting efforts, and benefits are being transferred to the creditors and to the shareholders. Here comes the need of an auditor. The auditor mainly review functioning on various parameters and give their reports. The idea is to have a third party to review the working of the company and independently give a report to the shareholders. The auditor's report is circulated to the shareholders and discussed and adopted by them in the annual general meeting of the company. If auditors make a comment in their report, the board of directors are bound to give their response to that comment. Since the inception of the company law, the auditor has been integral part of the corporate structure. Over the period of time, their eligibility criteria, powers, duties, etc. have evolved. And, the new Companies Act has brought drastic changes into that. Some of the new provisions may be confusing. Some may look excessive. Some may look difficult to comply. But, we need to read and understand them. In this presentation, we will try to cover auditor's appointment. We will be excluding the government companies because the provisions discussed in this presentation are not applicable on government companies. First, a quick recap of the provisions of the Companies Act 1956. In the old Companies Act, the auditors used to be appointed by the members, or we say shareholders, every year in the annual general meeting of the company. Such auditors were holding the position from annual general meeting to next annual general meeting, so broadly covering one financial year. There was no requirement to change the auditors after a particular period. Therefore, the companies continued with the same auditors for years. There were also some eligibility criteria given in the old Act. The new Act also goes on the similar lines with some changes, such as In the new Act, members are empowered to appoint auditors for five years with ratification every year. Means, the appointment is now for five years in place of one year, subject to ratification. Another key change brought by the new Act is rotation of auditors for certain class of companies. Means, the existing auditors will step down after a fixed term and new auditors will be appointed. Additionally, there is a change in the eligibility criteria and responsibilities of auditors under the new Act. So, let's start with the appointment of the auditor and look at the provisions at glance. The first appointment must take place within 30 days after the incorporation. This appointment shall be done by the board of directors. If the board fails to do so, they shall refer the appointment to be done by the members in extraordinary general meeting. That first auditor shall hold the office up to the first annual general meeting of the company. Then, in first annual general meeting, members shall appoint the auditor for five years. Every year, the appointment will be ratified by the members in the coming annual general meeting. 
for listed companies and certain other class of companies. Individual auditor will be appointed for one term of five years. An auditor's firm can be appointed for two terms of five years, or we say, up to ten years. Over here, a new auditor firm with common partners cannot be appointed. But, after a five years cooling off period, the original auditor firm can be appointed. Now, let's look at the legal provisions relating to appointment. Appointment of First Auditor Subsection 6 of Section 139 talks about the appointment of First Auditor. Following is the text of that subsection. Notwithstanding anything contained in Subsection 1, the First Auditor of a company other than a government company, shall be appointed by the Board of Directors, within 30 days, from the date of registration of the company. And in the case of failure of the Board to appoint such auditor, it shall inform the members of the company, who shall within 90 days at an extraordinary general meeting, appoint such auditor, and such auditor, shall hold office, till the conclusion of the first annual general meeting. So, as per the legal requirement, the board should appoint the first auditor within 30 days of registration, or we say in corporation. If board fails to do so, it has to inform the members who shall appoint the first auditor in an extraordinary general meeting. Means, the board will have to take the necessary steps to call the extraordinary general meeting. Once appointed, such first auditor shall hold office up to the date of the first annual general meeting. So, the first auditor was to be appointed by the board, or by the members, in extraordinary general meeting. And, such first auditor, would hold the position, till the first annual general meeting. Now, let's see, how the appointment moves from the first annual general meeting onwards. Subsection 1 of Section 139 says, Subject to the provisions of this chapter, every company shall, at the first annual general meeting, appoint an individual or a firm as an auditor who shall hold office from the conclusion of that meeting till the conclusion of its sixth annual general meeting and thereafter till the conclusion of every sixth meeting and the manner and procedure of selection of auditors by the members of the company at such meeting shall be such as may be prescribed. So, the important points are The appointment of auditor shall take place in the first annual general meeting by the members. This appointment could be of an individual chartered accountant or a firm of chartered accountants. Over here, the firm also includes a limited liability partnership. Then, Appointment shall start on the first annual general meeting, and shall be in effect, until the sixth annual general meeting of the company. Let's see how many financial years are covered under this period. For example, if the first annual general meeting of the company, held on September 30, 2015, then, second day GM, would be, sometimes in September 2016. 3rd in September 2017, 4th in September 2018, 5th in 2019, and the 6th AGM would held sometimes in September 2020. As per Section 139, in this meeting, auditor's appointment will be terminated, and the members will have to appoint same or some other auditor, subject to the rotation requirements. We would discuss the rotation requirements shortly. So, one thing is sure, that the appointment of auditor is not taking place for financial year. As per the provisions of Section 139, term of an auditor is starting at the particular annual general meeting and ending on the sixth annual general meeting from original. And cycle will continue. But, the auditors are going to review the accounts for financial year appointment. Therefore, let's see how many financial years are covered in single appointment. 
So, if the auditor is appointed in September 2015, he will first audit the accounts for the financial year ended on March 16, then also for March 17, and similarly for March 18, 19 and March 2020. And, in September 2020, in the 6th AGM, the auditor will cease to hold office, and a new appointment shall take place. So under the new Companies Act, single appointment of an auditor will cover a spell of five financial years. Then, in the 6th AGM, the appointment will again take place, and would continue in effect, until the 11th AGM, of the company. In the 11th AGM, appointment will again take place, and would be effective, until the 16th AGM. Each spell of the appointment of auditor, would cover five financial years. There is an additional requirement given in the proviso to subsection 1 of section 139, which says, provided that, the company shall place the matter, relating to such appointment, for ratification by members at every annual general meeting. Means, although the appointment has taken effect, from first to sixth annual general meeting, in every annual general meeting between those first to sixth AGM, there's going to be ratifications, of such appointment. As a company secretary, you need to check, whether the appointment of the auditor of your company, is due for ratification, or for reappointment. And, Accordingly you would place the item in the AGM notice. Steps before any appointment. As we know, for the appointment of first auditor, the matter shall be either placed before the board, or before the members, in extraordinary general meeting. Subsequently, the appointment shall be done, by the members, for five years, subject to ratification every year. For each appointment, there are certain steps to be complied with. These things have been provided in the proviso to subsection 1. These are Written consent from the auditor shall be obtained for each appointment. So, the proposed auditor must give his consent to act as auditor. Whether it's the first auditor or subsequent appointments or a reappointment of same auditor or a new auditor being appointed. In all cases, a prior auditor's consent is required. The second requirement is a certificate from the proposed auditor that his appointment, if made, shall be in accordance with the provisions of the Companies Act. Such certificate also needs to confirm that the proposed auditor satisfies the criteria provided under Section 141. Section 141 of the Companies Act 2013 provides various eligibility criteria for auditor. In a separate presentation, we would discuss those eligibility criteria. Then, the steps to be taken after the appointment, which are the intimation to the auditor of his appointment and filing the notice with registrar. Once appointment is done, either by the board, or by the members, the company shall intimate the auditor about his appointment, and also file the notice of such appointment, with the registrar of companies, within 15 days of such appointment. Now, we come to the rotation part. Rotation means, the auditor shall mandatorily be changed, by the company, after a particular time period. Under the Old Companies Act, there was no requirement of rotation. Most of the companies continued with the same auditors for years. Changes mostly took place wherever there was a change in control or management of the company or the relations with the auditors became so. The Companies Act 2013 introduced this key provision of rotation by Section 139. As per the new Act, Certain class of companies will mandatorily have to change their auditors after a particular period. So, this rotation provision is not applicable to all the companies. Only certain class of companies are subjected to this requirement. 
the requirement is given in the subsection 2 of section 139. Let's understand the criteria of companies wherein mandatory rotation of auditor is required. First criteria is listed companies. So, listed companies are mandatorily required to change their auditor after a particular time period. The term listed company is defined under subsection 52 of the section 2 of the New Companies Act. As per that definition, Listed company means a company which has any of its securities listed on any recognized stock exchange. Means, if any security is listed, then the company becomes the listed company. Therefore, if a private company has got its privately placed debentures listed, it shall classify as listed company and will have to comply with the rotation of auditors. The other criteria of companies where rotation is required is given in the rules. The relevant rules are The Companies, Audit and Auditors Rules 2014 So, in addition to the listed companies, as per Rule 5 of their relevant rules, certain unlisted companies are also subject to the mandatory rotation of auditors. Those companies are First all unlisted public companies having paid up share capital of rupees 10 crore or more. Second, all private companies having share capital of rupees 20 crore or more. So, check the share capital of your company to find out if rotation is mandatory. If your company's capital is lesser than the stipulated threshold, there is no need to rotate the auditor. However, there are additional criteria wherein, although your company's capital is lesser than 10 crore, or 20 crore, you will have to mandatorily rotate the auditors. That is, if the concerned company has the outstanding public borrowings, which are, borrowings, from financial institutions, banks or public deposits, of rupees 50 crore or more. So, first check the capital, if you are not covered under the threshold. Please also check the borrowings from financial institutions, banks or public deposits. Now, let's find the applicable rotation period. First determine whether your company is covered under the rotation requirement. Either your company, being a listed company, or a company having a share capital, or public borrowings, exceeding the threshold limits. If your company is outside the threshold, it can continue with the same auditors for years. The requirement is not applicable, till the time, either it becomes listed, or, it falls within the threshold, due to increase in share capital, or public borrowing. Second, also determine, whether the concerned auditor is an individual chartered accountant, or a firm of chartered accountants. Over here, the firm also includes a limited liability partnership. We need to find this difference because the rotation provisions are differently applicable between an individual auditor and an auditor firm. If the company is covered under the rotation criteria and having an individual auditor, it will not reappoint such individual auditor for more than one term of five consecutive years. Similarly, if the company is covered under the rotation criteria and having a firm as auditor, it will not reappoint such firm for more than two terms of five consecutive years. Means, an individual auditor cannot hold the auditorship for more than five years in that particular company. If the company is audited by a firm, such company can continue with the same firm for two terms of five years. Now. The question arises, whether the retiring auditor, after losing his position due to rotation, could be reappointed, ever again by the company. The proviso to subsection 2 of section 139, provides for a cooling off period of 5 years. Means, the retiring auditor, whether an individual or a firm, cannot be appointed as auditor for next 5 years, after completing the applicable one, or two terms. Once, cooling off period of five years has been completed, same old auditor can be appointed again, and would hold office, for one, or two terms, as the case may be.
means the company will have to bring a new auditor for five years, then the same old auditor can return for another term of five or ten years. There are certain additional points to be noted with regard to rotation of auditors. First, while changing to a new firm, the company cannot appoint a firm with the common partners of the old firm. For example, if XYZ Associates, having Mr. X, Y and Z, as partners, is a retiring auditor, after completing 10 years, the company, cannot appoint another audit firm, wherein, any of Mr. X, Y or Z, are partner. Second, after the enactment of new law, existing companies, having same auditors for years, would have a window of three years to change their auditors. Certain additional points relating to rotation provided in the rules. First, incoming new audit firm will not be eligible for appointment if it operates under the same network of audit firms, although having the different partners. Over here, same network means the firms which are operating under the same brand name or trade name or under common control. The second important point is, if the signing partner of an existing audit firm, resigns, and joins a new firm, such new firm will, also disqualify, for five years. The whole idea, to rotate the auditors, is to bring a fresh outlook to the company's audit process. If same partner is allowed to continue, as part of a new firm, the whole purpose of rotation, would be defeated. Therefore, it's not allowed. In this part of the presentation, we discussed certain basic points relating to appointment of auditors. We would shortly release the next part of the presentation, which would deal with the eligibility of auditors. Viewers can post their views and comments. Thank you for watching. For more presentations, please subscribe to this channel.